Hello everyone, I'm Jay Joshi and welcome to the 35th episode of Learning Java. Today, we'll be learning about a data structure called queues. So in my previous video, I covered stacks, which is another type of data structure. And I would recommend watching that video first because stacks are pretty similar to queues and to understand queues better, it's better to know stacks beforehand. So just like stacks, queues are also a linear data structure store, uh, used for storing and organizing data in the computer's memory. Now, unlike stacks, which use the last in first out technique, the LIFO technique, queues are used the first in first out technique. So what does this mean? So when I explain stacks, I use the example of a pile of books, but to visualize queues, it's different. Uh, to think of a queue, you can think of a normal queue in a fast food restaurant, for example. So look at this queue in this image, in this image over here, you can see that this person over here was the first one in the queue. This person came second, this came third, and this came fourth. This person will get his chance at the end. This person over here will get his chance at the end because he came last and this woman will get her chance first. Now the, this woman came first and she will do her payment and then she'll leave. So the person who comes first is the person who leaves first. This man came at the end and he leave at the end because his chance will come at the end. So this is why uh, queues use the first in first out system. The one who comes first is the first one to leave like a normal queue. So this is what queue essentially is, uh, queues essentially are. And again, queues can be implemented through arrays and linked list and uh, linked list we'll be covering later. So I'll be only covering how queues can be implemented through arrays. So um, just like stacks, uh, let me get rid of all this ink. Okay. Now, just like stacks, um, okay, this is a blank page. So over here, I'll draw a queue. So just like a stack, a queue looks the exact same like a stack. Then what is the difference? One difference I already told is that last in first out and first in first out. Queue, whatever comes in first, leaves first. Now in a stack, you might have, let me put the index as well, zero, one, two, three, four. So in a stack, you might recall that we have a top variable, which first points to the zeroth index. Then you only use the point, a top pointer to access each element, to remove elements and to add elements. But in a queue, we have two pointers instead of one. This is an advantage of queues over stacks is that we have two pointers instead of one. So accessibility of the elements is much easier because you have two pointers. One pointer is called rear and one pointer is called front. The front pointer, like you can see, is at the front of the queue and this rear pointer is at the rear. So the element you add first will be in the, the first front one and the element you add at the end is the rear one. Now the front pointer is used to remove elements and the rear pointer is used to add elements. Why? Because look at this front in this example, this is the front one. This person will leave first. So this is why it used to remove element. When this uh, woman goes, this will be the front pointer. And then this person will go and this does this front pointer is removing elements. The rear end of the queue is adding elements because when this person leaves, this woman leaves, uh, this woman leaves and this person will come at the spot of number three and one more person will come in this guy's place. So that person will now be the rear end. So this rear person has led to rear pointer has led to the addition of new elements. So rear pointer is used to add elements and the front pointer is used to remove elements. So where are these rear and front pointers located? So just like stacks, like the top pointers initially located at the zeroth position, the front pointer, which I'll be referring, referring to as F and the rear pointer, which I'll be referring to as R, both are at the zeroth index. And just to remind front is used to remove and rear is used to add. Now, when I add an element, let's say I add an integer element seven over here, this rear pointer will increment just like how the top increments when you add an element will move over here. Uh, right? So this rear pointer has moved over here. If I want to add one more element, then this rear pointer will move over here. Okay. So this rear pointer is used for adding elements. Now, if I want to delete an element, let's say I want to delete the seven element. 
then this front pointer comes in. So this front will get incremented from seven and this front pointer will come over here. So this does we assume that the seven is now empty. So even though the seven still stays, we just assume that there's nothing over there because the front pointer has deleted it. If I want to delete this eighth element as well, we increment the value of the front pointer and then uh, this eight is also deleted and the front end here have the same value and the stack is empty. So in case of a queue, there are two ways to find out if the stack is empty. If the value of the rear pointer is zero, it means that the stack is empty. Uh, otherwise, if the value of the rear pointer and the front pointer is the same, then the stack is also empty because all the elements added by the rear are deleted by the front and thus the index value of the front end rear pointer is the same. Also to check if the stack is full. So if the stack is full, the rear pointer will come over here and the front pointer will stay over here because it hasn't deleted any elements. So let me put some uh, elements over here. The rear pointer is over here. So this uh, queue is full. If uh, the rear pointer points to the index, which is the same as the length of the queue and the front is at zero. But again, if the front one uh, pointer comes over here, then this means that all the elements added by the rear are deleted by the front. So this is how a queue essentially works. And in the same way, you can access each element using the rear or the front pointer. It doesn't really matter. Now, one disadvantage which you can see of this uh, queue over here is that there's a wastage of memory in this queue because uh, whatever element is added, and then when the front uh, removes that element, you can't go back. So this is a disadvantage of queue. Unlike top in which you can go back and forth, in queue you can't go back. So this front or rear pointer, you can't decrement its value. Once it's increased, it's increased. So thus, if you put the front pointer, if you, let's say, put it over here, then this thing is wasted forever. The zeroth index is wasted forever because you can never add anything over there. So this is a disadvantage. So again, the element you add first is the element you remove first. So when the seventh element was added and let's say the seven and eight is there and I want to remove these elements, the first element I'll have to remove is seven because the front pointer will initially be at zero. So if I want to even remove eight, I'll have to remove seven first. So thus first in, so seven was added first and thus it's removed also first. So this is a brief idea of what queues are. Now, um, in queues, uh, in stacks, addition, the addition of an element is called push and the removal of an element is called DQ, is called uh, pop. But in queues, the addition of an element is called NQ and the removal is called DQ. And there are two other operations as well of queues. It's count, counts the number of elements and display, it displays all the elements in a queue. So that's pretty straightforward. NQ and DQ, it's addition and uh, removal. Now, these are some of the differences between an arrays and queues. So they're very similar to the difference between arrays and stack. It's just that this point is different. In this, in uh, stacks, only the using the top pointer, you can access elements. But in queues, you can access elements using two pointers, the rear and the front. Rear used to add elements and front used to remove elements. Unlike an array, you can access any element. In queues, you can't do that. Now here's a sample code of a NQ operation. This is just an algorithm. This is not the actual code. Algorithm means uh, it's a way of writing a code so that a layman person can understand it. It's a way of uh, writing the logic of the code. So if the rear pointer is equal to the total number of elements, then the queue is full. And if you try to NQ an element when the queue is full, it'll result in an overflow. And if you try to DQ or remove an element from the queue, when the queue is empty, it'll result in an underflow. It's the same terminology that we used in stacks. So this is very simple. If the rear is equal to the total is equal to N, then the queue is full and you can't add another element because it'll result in an overflow. Otherwise you just assign a value to the rear thing and you increment the value of rear. DQ removal of an element in case of a stack we used to just decrement it but in this case we'll increment the value of the front pointer so first you have to check if the stack is already empty or not because you can't remove an element from an empty stack so it checks this over here if front is equal to rear checks if the stack is empty 
and then it removes. Now, one important thing to note over here is that the value of the front variable, of the front pointer cannot be greater than that of the rear variable. It has to be equal or less than because uh, let's say the rear variable, I'll draw the stack again over here, over here. So let's say I have this Q over here with uh, some amount of elements, let's say four elements, and I've added one element over here, 10, the rear pointer points over here and the front one points over here. If I don't remove this element 10, the value of F increments comes over here. Now I can't increment the value of front further because the, I can't remove this element because there is no element over here. So this is why the value of front is always equal to or less than rear. However, rear is all can be more than front because I can just increment the value of rear to add an element over here. Now here's a, a graphical example of uh, queues to make you understand better. So in, this is a linear queue and if this they have expressed it horizontally, it doesn't matter. So right now the queue is empty and the value of front, uh, the front and the rear pointer are both at zero. Queue is empty. When you add an element, the front pointer remains at zero. However, the rear pointer value increases. If I add all these elements, four elements in this, uh, four elements over here, five elements, one, two, three, five elements, then the rear variable comes over and the front stays over here. Now over here, we have deleted two elements. These two we have deleted. So the front pointer comes over here and the rear pointer stays over there. I've deleted another three elements. So the front and the rear pointer are both over there. These elements are all deleted. Now, um, after deleting all elements over here, we can again, just add more elements like usual. So this is just a normal example of queues like I already explained. Now let's look at some more disadvantages of queues. Again, uh, so first of all, like a disadvantage of an array, the size of an array must be fixed and we can't change the size in the same way queues, the size is fixed and cannot be changed. And again, in a queue, space is wasted if we use lesser elements and space is also wasted if we delete an element. So if I delete an element from the zeroth index, I can't add an element in the zeroth index anymore. So space is wasted. Now, why am I telling you the disadvantages of queues? I'm telling you the disadvantages because to solve the disadvantages of wastage of memory in a queue, there have been invented two new types of queues, circular queues and double-ended queues. Double-ended queues are also known as DQs, BE queues, double-ended queues and circular queues. These two queues I'll be covering in a later video and these two queues overcome the disadvantages of a normal queue. This is why it's important to know the disadvantages of a queue. So again, just like stacks, queues, you won't find the use of them right now. Again, what you can do is try to write the codes for all these four operations to better understand your concepts. And again, these queues are used in memory. So that's it for today, everyone. Thanks for watching. And if you have any queries or suggestions, you can mail me. My email will be in the description down below. And thanks again for watching.